Oh, is it going to me first? Oh, I know. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, welcome to the Cloud Shell session. I, as I was saying a little bit earlier, um, this is something Steve and Judd and I uh, use Cloud Shell, and I have uh, uh, some experience with the Cloud Shell team. And there's just some really cool things that I like about this tool. There are also some things that um, you may not know about that I'd like to tell you about. And there are some uh, things that are going to happen very soon. So one of the things that I wanted to, that we're actually going to be showing you today is the new release that Cloud Shell is going to have out at the end of the month, um, and some of the important things that are going on with that. This is a cool tool, and so the idea is take a look at it, see what you think, use it if you need it, that kind of stuff. And this so is a of, cool tool. I've been using this pretty much since we launched uh, our company's prior company. So I used to work at this company too two companies ago, and we launched uh, a big initiative to go to the cloud. And I found Cloud Shell way back when, it feels like way back when, yeah. 2015, 2016 it time frame. So I've been using it for a while. Oh wait, we forgot to do a, a little sight gag here. Which one of us is which? <laughs> also, we have our eye on you. And by the way, if go ahead, come here, come here, come oh, here. We're not done with this photo, bit. Lean in, lean in, lean in. If if our heads touch, it's a distortion in the space-time continuum. Yeah, so. we're not really supposed to be this close to yeah, each other. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a little so terrifying. So do you want to give them the slide on intro so we can see? Oh, what is this thing doing? No, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, are you doing updates? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. What could possibly go wrong? Right in the middle what of my session. On? Yeah, mine mine tried to update on me. I said, please wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I missed please, it. Please, please wait. All right, let's talk about who we are. Okay, you're the your first one over here. Uh, I'm the left one. So I'm Stephen Judd. I'm a, currently an infrastructure engineer at 10th Street. 10th Street.com is our site. And I'm in the software as a service business in commercial transportation. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm at Stephen Judd on Twitter. No V required, in case you were wondering. Um, <laughs> I'm Jason. Uh, I am a PM on the PowerShell team, and I, I had a great opportunity uh, last year to really focus uh, with the Cloud Shell team and learn a lot from them. And in the process, uh, they're making uh, they're making some major strides on the Cloud Shell side. And so, um, while I'm back on PowerShell, um, there's just some cool things that I thought would be fun to. The kind of show. I forgot one housekeeping thing oh, we yeah, need to yeah, talk yeah. about. What's the so we do have an HDMI switter, 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 switcher, 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 and one is the slide deck. Two is you, three is me, and four is for more. For more. But it only works if I say it. Because if you say two is you, then that's me, and three is me, and two is you. You got it. Who's on first? I don't know. Let's okay. go to the next slide. So why should you care? Why should they care? I just told them why they should care. That's it's cool. right. It is cool. <laughs> Let's get to that. So first of all, what is Azure Cloud Shell? So Azure Cloud Shell, most people see this as a browser-based experience. When you go to the Azure portal, and I'm going to demonstrate this, you can click on a button and you get a shell. What is that shell? That, the, the shell gives you, a, it looks, tastes, and feels just like PowerShell, because it is. And so you get this great, authenticated, interactive session and inside of here, and we're probably gonna talk about this a lot, but inside of what you're getting is all of the tools are already installed for you that you need. Now, uh, yeah, I wrote up here Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell because, well, those are my friends, but you get all the tools that you need to manage Azure. So Terraform is in there. There's just tons and tons of tool sets for you to use for your Azure management life. But that doesn't mean that's the only thing that all those tools can be used for. The other cool thing about this is that it's updated yeah, automatically man. for you. Now, I would say that it's updated every month and that's probably how you will mainly experience it. But the honesty is it gets updated every week. Why? Because it has to be not only because of the speed of the development in Azure, but security reasons, right? And at Azure speed, everything must move quickly. So every week there's an update. That means all those tools are getting updated all the time. And I see Damien Carroll, my friend back there, 
who runs Azure PowerShell and AZ CLI, and those guys are updating constantly. Why? Because they have to. Speed of Azure, security. What do you think that means to you? What should you be doing? Update. So this, it can get hard, by the way, for you to keep your stuff always up to date. That's one of the reasons why I like Cloud Shell. Hey, now, Jason. Yeah. Um, so like on my local PC, I have the, the AZ command let's download because I did git module AZ yeah. and you know hit enter. How often are those updated? Every week. So how often do I have to run update? Every week. Okay. For everything that you need. Is there a solution oh. to that? <laughs> I love you. Is there a solution to that? Yes. Now, besides the browser experience, this is what a lot of people don't know. You can have Azure Cloud Shell not in the browser. I'm gonna show you several different ways. The last way I show you is my favorite. Um, but I have to tell you, I spend most of my time during the day in VS Code with Azure Cloud Shell in VS Code. Now, you get that by, and I don't think I put a note up here, but um, let me give you the note. It's an extension that gives you that capability in VS Code, and it's called the Azure Account Extension. And that'll set it up so that you authenticate to Azure with VS Code, and it will give you the option in the dropdown to have Cloud Shell. You can also use it in, I can't figure out which picture it is. It's that one up there. You can use it in Terminal which my friend will demonstrate at some point, but you will be able to use it in terminal. So you can have the experience of always up-to-date tools wherever you want it. So wherever you need to have it in whatever kind of environment you're working for. The other thing I wanted to point out was, how many of you have been to MS Learn or something like that where you see the Try It Now button and it, you, you click on it and it's, that's Cloud Shell. That's Cloud Shell. And, Press the green button and after you point it at the screen. After you point it at the screen? Ha ha. Oh, this thing. Oh, you know why they don't let me use laser pointers? Because I do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did this like 20 years ago. I did this and, I, and, they, and the guy took the laser pointer away from me. <laughs> All right. And, and he, he said, what, you know, I said, yeah, I don't want to cause any. I meant to say retinal damage. <laughs> yeah, you didn't need to say it, but yeah. I, at we, any rate, that's not about cloud shell. We're so. not, not going to repeat that for the recording. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, I forgot where we're at. Let's go to this. You were talking about which one of those you're going to show. Oh and yeah. We're, 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 sorry to distract you with no, the that's flashy okay. we're, green light. I didn't realize you were part cat. <laughs> that's right. Well, here, this slide's yours. You kick this oh, off. Oh, wait, wait. This is mine. That's right. But what is Azure Cloud Shell? So it is a container based on Azure Linux. So that I find that to be interesting. Now, remember, I said I started with this in 2015 timeframe, yeah, yeah. back when you had the Pow Bash. I don't know why they put Bash first. Probably alphabetical reasons. So Bash was on there in PowerShell, and you got to pick. And so when you hit PowerShell, it said, please wait, and it loaded a Windows container. Now, the Windows container was super cool because it came up, it worked, you had Windows, but it was PowerShell, right? The, the known problem with Windows containers is that they're big because they're really powerful and they have a lot of business involved, right? So when they switch to PowerShell cross-platform, now when you open it up, you're getting Azure Linux. And so, that's why it says, please wait. Yeah, yeah. So in a nutshell, folks, it started out that the containers, you had a Linux container for the Bash session, you had a Windows container for the PowerShell session. There was a huge problem with that if you experienced it at that time. That was the Windows container took a fortnight to load. A fortnight. I mean, it took forever to load. So when PowerShell became cross-platform, how do you solve the performance problem? You make the container Linux, you put PowerShell on there, it starts. So let me be completely honest with you. I'm going to show you a button in a minute. No matter which button you choose, you're getting the exact same container. There's no difference. So I'm going to ask you some questions about what you think about these buttons and their importance because you're getting the same thing. And that's just following good IT principles. It reduces your technical debt. Yeah. That helps Microsoft be able to deliver their customers faster and better. 
Yeah. Uh, we do have the docs, so you can look at that. And if you notice, we already talked about this, but the tooling updates, hey, look, I am not a part cat, so I can do this. We have tooling updates uh, with the Azure Cloud Shell is updated on a monthly basis. I love that gag. Actually, they're done weekly. So we talked about that. And you can do git package version to see what's happening in those. And you can just see if you're, if you're really want to see, are they lying to me? Well, we're not, but uh, we, we might later, but not right, not with this one. Yeah, if you're yeah. wrong, I'll run. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. And then we're going to do uh, TDNF info. What does TDNF info do? Same thing as git package. All right, then. <laughs> Gives you a list of all the products that are installed. All right. So you know, what, you know what that reminds me of? What? The Eclipse on Monday. Oh, yeah, I guess it kind of does. Nice job on the slides. They're his slides. Am I up on the screen? Do we have a demo yeah, for me... ephemeral. So yeah, I, I no, wanna... no, remember, one is Prezzo, two is you. Well, I was just hoping that you would. Three is me. <laughs> I'm reminding myself. Oh, okay. And four is more. Is that what it but is? It only works if I say it. I'm in control of all the devices. You, you just take your Mac over there and enjoy. And thank you, because that's the most responsible thing to do. <laughs> um, folks, let me demonstrate just how to... Start Cloud Show, get into it, and some of the options. What I'm going to be showing you is the new interface that's going to be released. Now, just so you can go, well, I'm going to do it today. Am I going to be able to figure this out? Yes. But it's going to be harder because the interface only has pictures. Now it has pictures and words to explain what you're clicking on. Ooh. So let me show this to you. I'm going to demonstrate this at first through the portal. So let me bring up um, my browser, Edge. And we'll go to the portal. And what I'm going to demonstrate is your first experience with Cloud Shell. you got to get connected and set it up. So I'm going to go into the portal, and I'm going to click on, this is the cloud. I know it's really small on my screen, but that's the Cloud Shell button up there. It says Cloud Shell, right? So I'm going to click on this. And ladies and gentlemen, this is that screen that you get to choose Bash or PowerShell. Now, there is a difference. Here's the difference. If you pick Bash, we give you a black screen. We launch Bash. We're good. If you pick PowerShell, we give you a blue screen. We launch up the Linux container, and then we fire up PowerShell. So you, the difference is blue screen, we start PowerShell. Or you can have a black screen, and you can start PowerShell by typing PWSH if you're ready to. My point being, I always use the black screen. A, the container starts faster because it's not starting PowerShell. Two, I like the black screen. The blue screen is like yesterday. <laughs> so get over it. Three, I use a lot of AZ CLI and I don't necessarily need to have PowerShell loaded, but I do load PowerShell when I use AZ CLI because I get predictors which you don't get. So anyways, there's that. So you pick one. I'm going to pick PowerShell so everybody can be happy, right? So be gloriously happy as I pick PowerShell. And it comes up and it says, well, okay, what, how, we need to know how you want to like do, what is all of this? Here's the deal. We use Cloud Shell so that you can store scripts, output, stuff like that. Traditionally, Cloud Shell requires that you have a storage account, the storage account in Azure, and you, Cloud Shell plugs you into it. Then you can save files there, and it'll be there, and you can put your scripts there and all that kind now, of stuff. Now, don't steal my thunder, because I'm going to show him that. That's right, that's right, that's right. 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 So I, 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 he's going to show that. There's also a new way, and this is the way that comes out in April, and I want to give you a, a little bit about this. It's called ephemeral sessions. It means that there is no storage account. So right now, from what I've just told you and what you know, what's, what's the bad thing about ephemeral sessions? Where am I going to store my content? I actually like what he said. They're ephemeral, which means you got no place to store your content. You sure you do. You can still store it on your local drive and all that stuff and just copy it up into Cloud Shell. There's all kinds of different ways, but that's what that means. Ephemeral means no storage account. Here's the benefit. This is probably going to be the most secured way, except for one other option. We're all thinking about security today. Storage accounts, when they get created, they get created by default in the subscription, and by default, it has public access. If you don't remember to turn the public access off, that's the problem, and that's the scary nightmare. I'm going to show you how not to ever do that. 
one ephemeral. Ephemeral means when I connect to ephemeral, I'm gonna say, I gotta select my subscription. You have a few. Yeah, I have a few and it didn't find the, there it is. <laughs> and I realize the screen is small, I apologize. Um, let me just say apply. I have said I want ephemeral, no storage account, just give me Cloud Shell. Now, for your next Cloud Shell experience, when you click on the button, there'll be no questions, it'll just go right in using your existing settings. Are you with me? I will show you how to clear those settings so that you can do it all over again. It does take a minute, and especially over this internet, so give me a minute. The shell will start up. He's gonna show you some of the neat things in the shell. I'm just showing you how to get it set up right now. When it comes up, um, there will be a warning message for, uh, I think if you, if you weren't in Damien's session, uh, Damien was explaining this. this is a feature, not a flaw. The big warning message I'm getting uh, up there. And that's because I have a whole bunch of different subscriptions, as you saw on my list. And so it's telling me, we picked one, may not be the one you want. So go, go tell us. And he has a whole <laughs> new system that's releasing at build to make this not a pain. Anyways, oh, nice. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to PowerShell in the cloud. What can you do with that? <laughs> Wait. I, I brought all this technology, I forgot the applause sign. <laughs> of all things. I'm sorry. I know it's really hard to read on my screen, but take a quick look across the bar because this, this is as much time I'm going to spend on it because they put words there. What do you think restart means? Thank you. No, I didn't want to click on it. Don't do it. <laughs> Manage files. This is how you upload files and download files. But you're saying you're in an ephemeral session. Why would you do that? Because, watch, touch. It's not typing. Ah, uh, there it goes. Ah. Touch. Well, that'll be turned into a bad joke. Um, <laughs> touch. <laughs> um, no, that'll even be worse. Just to, File.txt, gee whiz. There we go. Guys, look. Uh, SFW. See, I've got file.txt. But you said there was no storage. There isn't. As soon as you leave, that's gone. That's beautiful. I love the temporary storage. I can throw things up there, play with stuff, break stuff, whatever, and then it goes away. I like that. Um, so you can upload and download. You've got a new session, so you can have like a tab thing, multiple sessions. You can do uh, the editor. I'll come back to this a little bit later. Web preview, nobody knows what that means. And <laughs> set, no, web preview is, you can actually redirect a port. So if you had, think about this. In Cloud Shell, you could set up uh, uh, um, uh, the notebooks. Um, uh, Jupyter notebooks? Jupyter notebooks open up a port, and you can have a cloud shell session, you can be hitting it on a web page, reading Jupyter Notebooks through that cloud shell. I mean, it's just cool. Uh, that is cool. Settings, this is where you go to do what I'm gonna do. Change the text size, make it larger. Oh. Change the font, change the theme. This is where you reset your user settings if you want to experience this again, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I have two quick last things to show you before we move on. So I'm resetting it, it goes right back to this screen. I get to start all over. This time I'm gonna choose Bash, just so you can see what this experience is like. This is the experience that I usually use. I am going to, this time, mount storage, so I can have a storage account. This is the traditional way, this way is not going away. So if you like this, you can keep this. When I go to mount storage, I need to give it a subscription once again. Yeah, wow. Um, apply, a second screen comes up. This is, what's the first option here? Oh, select an existing one. So if you had one that's already been created or if you created one, you can connect to it. You can, we, thank you, man. We will create the storage. That means we are gonna create this storage account, give it some randomly generated number assignment and slap it into your subscription for you. That's the one that's gonna have that public access that you, you need to take care of. The other thing is, is I want to create a storage account. In other words, if I show you this screen real quick, and I want to create a storage account, you come up, select a resource group, give it a region that you want the, the, the storage account in, give it a storage account name and a file share, you're done. If you want a storage account for storage in Cloud Shell, not a problem. Now, Are if you you're in a corporate environment, 
this is the stuff you're going to do. You're going to preset that up because if you allow your users to create a storage account because you've given them a subscription, subscription that they have create rights to, then every time it creates one, it's going to be CS. You'll see it in mine when I get to the demonstration. A whole lot of hex numbers and letters and such, and then that will be the name of your storage account. And then you're at some point going to have a user call and say, hey, um, my content that I live and die by disappeared. Can you help me find my storage account? And you'll be like, sure, what's the name of it? You mean there's a name? And then you'll have to associate it. Uh, I believe we have a question in the back. Oh, yeah. The question is, if you set it up a while back and you don't remember the name, can you get that name for the storage account? Absolutely. Yeah, when you're signed in and you're in there, you can check the environment space, D-I-R-E-N-V. You can, or if you're on I'll the Linux side. Yeah, and he's, oh, you're going to show I'm it? Show oh, that. great. Well, as a matter of fact, I think it's time for you to play. Oh, here. is we'll it just show. my yeah. turn? My turn? Let's see. Where are yeah. we at? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, just, just to prove that we're not trying to pull a fast one on you guys here. Uh, that was the existing storage account. And now we're going to talk about using Azure Cloud Shell. So accessing the Cloud Shell. Let's see, three is me. Let's see if I did this right. All right, so mine's going to look a little different because I'm... Ooh, that was entertaining. It just jumped around. Uh, I'm using the consumer experience. I have my own tenant. I only have one subscription. It's the one that's tied to my Discover card. So I'm kind of militant about what goes in there because I have to pay for that junk, right? But this is it. And I wanted to show you the text that was in here. This has been in there since 2015 because it used to take about five minutes for that Windows container to load up. And it's like, oh man, well, this one loads up much faster. And so uh, now, which program am I running and why don't I have a blue background? I'm using Windows Terminal. When, I, when you set this up and you connect Windows Terminal, you get, uh, this is very hard to read, let me zoom, you get Azure Cloud Shell as an option. So then when you connect to Azure Cloud Shell, zoom back out here, because I don't need that menu anymore, go away. It's gonna ask you, hey, you've already connected to a tenant. And so now that it's connected to a tenant, all I have to do is say, all right, go to my tenant, and it authenticates and it goes. Now, much to Sean Wheeler's chagrin, I'm a monster, and in my profile, I have changed LS to be get child item, and I did LSL for LS. <laughs> uh, yeah, not much to say about that, except for since I started using PowerShell and found out about aliases, I've been LSing my way on Windows since 2010. You know how hard it is to change your ring finger, ring finger memory? Near impossible. So when I connect to a Linux shell and LS is now a native command, because remember, it's Linux here, then it output that stuff that you saw in JSON where it did one word, one word, and it does them across, and it does however crazy thing Linux does when you have a bunch of files. I want the objects. So I did that. What else was I going to show? Oh, yeah, let's roll over to... Do you want to show them, like, get package? So oh, yeah, that's that? right. We did have that command. Let me go back over there. So get... Don't ever type in demos. i got to get out of the way. My shell is doing this weird thing where the history is all weirdo, but apologize for that. I couldn't figure that out. And yeah. just started it yesterday. So when you do get package or you do a TDNF, you get a list of all of the tooling. And the only reason I say just to run this for fun is look at everything that's in here that you don't have to manage in order to service your problem. My worst nightmare has happened so many times. Bing, outage. Jump in, I can't even start to troubleshoot because it takes me an hour to get through the updates. That's not a good place to be. Look at how far direct, or what was that? Recovery services is rev to. They're at 6.8. Here's 414. You guys don't want to try to keep up with this. By the way, I kind of like this one. But you'll also notice that when you use Cloud Shell, you get all the features of PowerShell that you would expect, right? Uh, you get the predictive IntelliSense, everything. So it's an environment you know, you're comfortable with, all that. That's exactly right. So let's look at TDNF info just for fun. Oops, I was highlighting something, so that just went into my clipboard. 
tdf info. That is a Linux command. It is outputting the Linux strings, because that's what Linux does, right? So similar things, here's all your stuff, but it's just not as useful as the, the objects, in my opinion. Yeah. Which is why we use PowerShell. Let's see, did I have, we have a question? Yes. Where did I write those aliases? That's very good. So because I have a storage account for mine, which I need to show so that we can see the, the name of it, I have it stored in my profile. So if I do dollar profile, like I said, the history is doing some weird things. There is my profile location. Notice it is in home, Steven, config, PowerShell, et cetera. Now, where exactly is that? Thanks, Mike, for walking me into that. Is if I run mount, here's all the mounts in that container. There's a few. Okay? So which one is it? Well, I being a PowerShell person, said, okay, run git sj mount. So I converted the mount output into an object doing my function, right? And okay, it's a little hard to read. So let's run it again did and do, that? did I wrap that? No, I'm more of a classical musician. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. Put that out the format list and now you can see it. Look at this one. Yeah. There, okay? That's mounted on user cloud drive. That's where your cloud drive is. So if you wanna know where these are, this is, this is what you do to go find it. Now, since I mentioned storage, I'm gonna jump over to the actual dashboard and show you my exceptionally complex environment, <laughs> which is nothing. There's nothing out there, okay? I have a storage account. So if I click on the storage account, takes me into my storage account. Okay, and nothing special about that, but remember when I said Cloud Shell the rest. That's the name of it. Now, let me flip back over to here. Notice Cloud Shell the rest. How does that work? Who's worked with file.core.windows.net? Yes, sir. Right, so you know what that is. The magic behind the curtain is over here on everything, we have containers and file shares. So if I go into file shares, there it is. Same name, hard to read, so I'm gonna zoom. Yeah, did you know that Windows Plus and Windows Minus is built in zooming? Not that zoom it isn't awesome, I just do this, because it's built in. I live off the land. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a security principle. I don't know why everyone's laughing at that. I must have missed that joke. All right, but here's what's cool. So I'm gonna go over here to browse. Again, let me just control plus this, make it a little bigger. So I'm gonna go over here to browse, and notice I now have Cloud Console, and then some other stuff. Well, what's in here? Let's take a look right quick. Here's Git Ignore and the Edge Test and Read Me and SJ1 and some shortcuts that I'm doing. All right, back over here, I'm gonna do LS. And yes, I get the get child item because I'm not a, I'm, I'm not full blown Linux, but I, I'm also getting better. All right, so same content. So I can access it here directly. What's fun is you can actually go into something like SJ1 here. Uh, no, I wanted to click on this part. Where's the edit? I've forgotten, oh, no, that's edit quota. I thought I could get to it from here. Ha ha ha, edit, thank you. Very helpful audience today. Uh, may not render corrector correctly, but yeah. there it is. And so now I can go in here and edit it here and it will change what's in Cloud Shell. Yeah, that's cool. Wanna know what else is cool? Since it's here, you can do get, I don't know why it does that, but it's really annoying me. You can do git status. Now what I've done is I took that cloud shell folder and put, moved it up to my GitHub repo. You can do it in your own corporate environment. So now I have versioning on my cloud drive. Now there is one more thing that I want to get to, to Mike's point here is that if I do git content on dollar profile, This here is where I define my aliases. 
Is that readable in the back? Okay, good. This is where I define my aliases. Now notice I've defined it as a key value. And then I go for each item in there, create an alias if it doesn't exist. And that's how it does it. And it's in my profile and it loads every time. And then I do some other interesting things that I'm gonna show later, but I want you to look at this right quick. So I set the PS key, PS read line key handler cord. Thanks again to Sean Wheeler for that tip. But I'm, I'm doing the prediction view style. I change my prediction view style based on what device I'm using. Foreshadowing. Okay, let's see if I can get to the last little bit. Now, where is all the stuff? So like if you're not, oh wait, that was what I wanted to show. Super last, last thing. Where is my set location? Notice, I do set location right here to Cloud Drive because I want, when I load mine, I wanna be in the location for my storage where I can access my files by default. Normally, it drops you into your home drive. Where is your home drive? Your home drive is in the container that it stores for you. That container is stored in .cloud console. Inside cloud console is a square box that is drawing itself. <laughs> Come on, square box. Come on, square box. Whatever. Uh-oh, demigods, demigods. Let's go. All right, well, while that's loading up, there's what's gonna show up here eventually is the file. This is your image file for your console. Now, it's mounted in part of all those mount commands. There it is. It's the ACC underscore Steven IMG file. And that is what holds your content. Now, so what they do is they take your content and they bake it into the image and those two combined give you your environment. Yeah, we literally mount the cloud drive into the image when it boots. Right, so those things that you put in your root go in here, well, how can you access them? Challenging, I found that not to be as easy as being able to get directly to my files. Mm -hmm. So, I think that was everything that I wanted to show about cool. that for now. Can you uh, turn my guy on and then I'll you go back bet. to slides in just a second. I just wanted Two to show you. everybody that um, I'll have this reconnect. Uh, I wanted you to see the cute black screen. Yeah. And because um, it loads faster. And if you want, then you go PWSH. Voila. Yeah. So whichever, whichever kind of flavor you want. Just to let you know, for security reasons and for the next thing I'm going to tell you, what's really happening in the background is we have a container image. That container image is run on a VM. And when you access it, we spin this all up. We hand this to you. When you leave, the container gets destroyed. The VM gets destroyed. There is never a time you are on a container and a VM with anyone else, ever. That's for pure, that's for security isolation, right? That's the boundary. And here's the thing. Some people, it's funny because the security people ask me, why aren't you worried about container escapes? because they're gonna container escape themselves right into a hole. Because that VM can't do anything, can't go anywhere, that kind of thing. So it's a very secured environment that's clean every single time, yeah? So I know it's just kind of one of those things. Now, one of the things I, I wanted to, oh. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, and you, can you go back to the slides? Yeah, the, oh, yes, yes. I'll talk a little bit about it, it is not a VM image. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. It's the question it, is, the, why was the image five gig size? Yeah. yeah, and when you actually, if you park it locally, it's going to become six point five gigs. Um, it, the reason is, is there's that much stuff, and I'll explain. It. It's a double layered image. It's a base image with a lot of tooling, and then there's a separate, always up to date tooling image on top. It's it's five gig of stuff. That's why. Um, it's not just a Linux image, it's Linux plus all of these apps, Terraform, all of this stuff. So it's a big image. Is this the slide yeah, you wanted yeah, or was uh, this Yeah, this one, this one, perfect. Really quick, I wanna give you some tooling and some ideas here. This is a complicated subject, but remember I was saying that ephemeral sessions, probably the most secured way because there's no storage account. If you want storage accounts, we have a recommended way of setting them up. Here's what you get at the end. You get storage accounts for your team that are behind 
a firewall. That is much more. Our enterprise customers run BNet isolation. However, it's hard to set up. So what essentially is going to happen here is that customers from the outside want to be able to get a cloud shell container. What we were doing was putting the storage account right at the end of the subscription. What we're going to do now is have you create a resource group, set up a network with some subnets, and these are going to become the places where the cloud shell container is going to initiate from. This set of subnets is going to have, we will put, we do this automatically for you, we slam front door on top of it. You are now protected. And so our biggest customers do VNet isolation. Um, the challenge here is, did I have, oh yeah, that's the doc slide. Go ahead and flip it over to mine. Okay. So the challenge is, how do I install this thing? And let me just tell you, Docs, I put the link in the slide, but Docs, um, and it helps if you type Azure Cloud Shell. Let me go to the Docs here and just show you something. Oh, look at all the video. Why doesn't this go to the right page? There it is. Um, under This is the Docs set for Azure Cloud Shell. And everything I'm talking about, I've, all of the new stuff coming out, we've already got the documents out. Thank you, Sean Wheeler. Um, down in here is deploying Cloud Shell in a virtual network. I want to show you the doc, but I'm not going to drag you through the doc. It starts out at the beginning with, here's what you need to collect before you begin. We're not kidding. If you do not follow these instructions, the odds of you being successful is zero. <laughs> Having mentioned that, if you follow the instructions and you do not have success because it's hard and it's got weird concepts to it, use Azure support. We have a specialized trained support team to help you through this. Yes, you are not alone. Don't fight this problem. Let us help you with this. So when you set this up, you're gonna need to do things like configure resource providers and then configure subnettings, virtual subnets, virtual IP addresses, and they must be correct for your environment or nothing works. You must set correct permissions. You must configure this bad boy for all of this. When you are all done and you click the magic button, you get the same thing that you've already seen this morning. The what? Yeah, it's, it's all the same? Yeah. I, I can click the button and go, look, it's in VNet. It's the same thing. <laughs> That's the point. It's set now, it's a highly secured VNet with storage accounts. Get it? So here's the way I want you to think about this. And this is the way that I think about it. If I had a magic wand and could just wave it and have my way tomorrow, Cloud Shell would only provide ephemeral as a default session unless you configured a VNet. In other words, uh. that mistake that people can make in the middle, I don't even want it to exist. It's just not worth it. So I want you to think about, hey, if I'm just going in to check something or play with something or I just want to check it out kind of thing, use ephemeral. And if your company wants to, is, is going to use this, talk to us, let us help you with a VNet isolation. Yeah. No, that's a great solution because there's always been that concern from the corporate environment. It's like, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to open this up? Or we're letting people access to Cloud Shell and they have access to our entire tenant. So this is a brilliant solution. It, it really is, but I have to say it's very complicated. So we're working, we're still working on improving it, making it better. A gift that I want to give you, I'm going to give you a link at the end. It'll have my GitHub on it. It'll have all this presentation stuff in it. We do not publish this because it is not supported. So I'm telling you right now, what I'm going to give you is not supported. Don't call Microsoft. They're going to say, tell you to go pound salt. We don't know who this guy is. <laughs> so whatever. Going through the portal to set this up, because I have to do this a lot, or at least I used to have to do this a lot. Going through the portal to set this up, I don't have enough time in the day for this. Um, it is, <laughs> so yes, you can script it. It only takes four commands. And so I am going to do not raise your camera. <laughs> I'm going to show you my actual script. Don't just make, so you get an idea. Don't make me laser you. 
<laughs> I have given you what I call the customer version, which is all of my values are removed. But I want you to see what it looks like with the values in it. It's only about four commands, but these suckers are beefy. So I've splatted them. And I, I'm going to give you this, not the working one, but, um, but I just want you to get an idea. Mm. You need to create a resource group. You need to uh, create a virtual network. So far, so good. Not that difficult, not that complicated. Let me get rid of this. I don't need this guy right now. Uh, not that mm -hmm. difficult, not that complicated. But notice, you have to choose these names. And then you have to remember that you chose those names <laughs> for what you're doing. You've got to get the IP addressing. But then the magic of setting this up, it's all done through an ARM template. Two ARM templates. You just got to give me the data right for those ARM templates. So if you screw it up, who cares? Just kill it, kill the resource group, change the data, fire it again. I got it. Yeah. So you get the idea, right? So, so you're you using ARM templates for that? The ARM templates are the ones that actually do the configuration of the VNet. Do those things give you a hand? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, derailed him. So I just kind of want you to see this. You've got to name things like the relay's got to be named. You've got to come up with something called an authorization ID. And so all of this can be yours for four easy payments of absolutely free. So this is an example. This is what I'm giving you in GitHub. So it's the commands, the structure, everything, but it's Put your values in there. Go to the doc. The doc will explain to you what value goes there. So you can either do it either way. You can either play with play with it this way, play with it. Yeah, kind of cool. All right. That is really cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm impressed by that. Whatever. I do like it. Don't call for support on the script. <laughs> yeah. This is I my think, tool. <laughs> I think that's a yo-yo uh, solution. You yeah. know what a yo-yo solution is? Yo on yo own. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what a yo-yo solution is. All right, that was that was awesome. Now? What are we up to now? I I want to show something that I think is pretty Go awesome. Go for it, and then we'll do one more thing. All oh right. God, we're out of time. Yeah, I know we're out of time. That's why I'm going to blast through this really fast. So the four is more part of this is. Let's see if this thing's going to come online. Hello. All right. Uh, ha ha ha. Okay. This is a tablet. This is the tablet running Azure. I'm using a mouse connected here. That's because I left my keyboard mouse combo in the hotel. Oops. But what's awesome about this, and I have to pardon me while I turn around because I can't see. How do I get this? Oh man, I'm becoming a yoga instructor here. Down here is Cloud Shell. What, what in the world would happen if I loaded the Cloud Shell on my tablet? Now it'd be really nice to have my keyboard and I was doing this. Also, I mean, come on, that's cool. because I'm here and presenting it, it only shows there. It doesn't, it doesn't mirror like Windows does. But notice that looks exactly like my black screen over here. And it's doing all the things like in giving me my LS for that. Yeah, it's exactly the same. But wait, there's more. Thank you, Danny, for stealing my thunder earlier. If I just unplug from this one, this is some serious live demo stuff going on here, man. And I plug into this one, this is my phone. My phone has internet connection and all of that. Come on, it does take a minute to sync. Come on. Ha ha. And here is what? Cloud Shell. And when I run the Cloud Shell, it does the same thing. Remember when I showed you that crazy splat that I had that was checking for things? Interesting little tidbit here. The, I gotta look it up because I can't remember it. The host.ui.raw, ui.buffer size.width is 100 on this. The window size is width. The max window size is width and the max physical window size width. They're all 100. All of the properties in the, in the uh, mobile app is 100. So I check to see whether it is, and I change my PS read line from the list of history to the inline history, so it doesn't clutter up my view and scroll and scroll like mad. That's a cool little trick, don't you think? Yeah. 
And by the way, when you configure Cloud Shell through the portal for yourself, you don't have to do any additional configurations for all of this stuff to work. It reads that same configuration in Azure, so all your device, it's not like I have to sit down and redo everything, yeah? All right, the one more thing is on you, right? Yeah, um, I don't need that, I just need- You go. Okay, um, so we're out of time, but I wanna show you this. This is the Azure Cloud Shell GitHub, so you can get to it in the slides, I've got a link for you. In, the reason I'm showing this is because I want you to see that if you scroll down the readme, there's a set of instructions here called building and testing the image. I wanna show you if you follow these instructions, what you get. Ready? This is my favorite way to use Cloud Shell. I'm gonna be real quick, guys. Um, let me open this up, PowerShell. I want you to notice something, I'm gonna do get module, maybe list available. I've got a short list on my local deck. I don't like to gum up my local system much and I have to test a lot of things, right? So here's what I do. Following those instructions, you get, a you get the Cloud Shell container on your local machine. Wait. See us anywhere? Wait. I'm gonna do an LS. If I go into data, this has been bound to my local drive and my network drive. So I have Cloud Shell that runs, manages in Azure, and now it manages on-prem for me, gives me full access to all my local resources. I have all my Azure resources. It's always up to date, because I never have to update it. This is my favorite shell. It's PowerShell, it's always up to date, it's beautiful. The best part is you can just do a Docker pull and grab the tools image and do all this. The instructions are out there. That's right. What I do is I modify, and by the way, I'm gonna see if one of the engineers will publish this on the GitHub officially, because we're gonna fix some of this, but I use the uh, Docker files and I've, I just customize my own Docker file. And on Monday morning, I do a Docker uh, build on the tools image. It takes about two minutes and I'm good for the week, guaranteed. Kind of cool? Come on, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's why I use it all the time because I absolutely love it. It's and so see, useful. The best part is I can just jump out and I can jump right back in. It loads so fast. And those of you that use this on the web, we have a 20 minute timeout, 20 minutes of, of inactivity. There is no timeout here. I can sit in this all day long and not have to reconnect and not get thrown out and it's not a web. So folks, that's the end of it. You, you bring up yeah, the last thank you slide. Thank, um, you. thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah, you're back. Thank you guys.